Well, I was in the shop the other day working on the cigar ashtray. I had this piece of walnut that was sitting up on my shelf and it's got this giant crack down the center, which I thought it might be just unusable or I'd have to cut it down into some smaller pieces, but then it just hit me. I had the perfect project for it. So I went to work and I turned this to this awesome bourbon tasting flight. Now I poured epoxy down the center and inlaid some mustaches instead of the traditional bow ties. I thought they looked pretty cool. Now don't let that run you off. Anybody can do these that has a router. I promise they're extremely easy. I'm gonna show you how to do it in the video. Also, I'm gonna show you a little trick at the end of the video that I use when finishing this board that makes it multi-purpose. So be sure to stick around and let's get started. To get things started, I clamped the board in my bench vise and cleaned up the inside of the crack with some sandpaper. I mean, no one wants a dirty crack, right? Over at the miter saw, I squared up the rough edges and then moved to the workbench for the real work to begin. For these next few steps, I needed the board secured to my bench. However, I needed the top to be clear of any obstruction, so using clamps were not an option. So instead, I decided to use one of my favorite and most used tricks in the wood shop, and that's using CA glue and masking tape. I taped strips of masking tape to my bench and to the board, assuring that the areas were roughly the same size. Next, I applied CA glue to the tape on the bench and sprayed accelerator on the tape that I placed on the board. Now don't worry, the accelerator will not harm the wood in any way. Once you place them together and after a few seconds of pressure, the board will be secured firmly to the bench. Pretty cool, huh? I wanted to leave the crack in the board and incorporate it into the project, but I needed to fix it so that it wouldn't split any further after the project was completed. I really wanted to try something different here and I wanted to stay away from the traditional bow ties, so my buddies and co-hosts over at the Go Build Something podcast suggested that I check out these cool inlay stencils from slabstitcher.com instead of trying to do something on my own. And before you ask, no, this project is not sponsored by them. I went to their website and found these mustache inlays and I thought they would look great for this project. I was able to purchase everything that I needed for the inlays for around $80. After getting the guide and the quarter inch bit installed in my router, I used two of the mustache inlays and the guide plate itself to set the depth of my router bit. This is a neat little trick that ensures that your bit depth is perfect every time. After securing the guide plates in place, I routed the areas for the inlays. Again, this is super fast and easy. Once the areas for the inlays were routed, I removed the guide plates and applied glue for the first mustache and started hammering it in place. Now, at this point, I need to stop the video and explain something. I've been woodworking for almost a decade, but I still make mistakes. Everyone does. Case in point, don't hit a delicate mustache inlay with a mallet like I'm doing here, or this will happen. But the good news is if you mess up as much as me, then you learn from each mistake and move on. Luckily, I ordered one more mustache than what I needed, so I grabbed it and sanded a little around each edge. This time, instead of just hitting the inlay directly with my mallet, I grabbed a scrap board and used it between the mallet and the inlay. This will evenly distribute each strike on the inlay and reduce the chance of breaking it. With the inlays in place, I didn't want to just leave the crack open for this particular project. 
So I sealed off the back and the side with some painter's tape, making sure to press down across the entire length of the tape. I keep some epoxy around the shop for knots and voids, so I decided to use some of it to fill the crack and add some color to the mix for a little pop. This is a pretty straightforward process, and I just filled the area completely with the epoxy. After that, I used my heat gun to pop all the bubbles that made their way to the surface, and then it was time to have a beer or two while the epoxy cured. Actually, with the epoxy that I'm using, it ended up taking a little longer than that, and a few hours later, the epoxy was cured. If you want to check out the exact epoxy that I'm using, as well as any other tools or materials in this video, I'll put direct links to all of them down in the description section below. After the epoxy was fully cured, I grabbed my Merca sander with some 80 grit and sanded the epoxy and the inlays until they were flush with the board. I wanted the mustaches in the epoxy to be centered on the board once it was completed, so I used my T-square to mark a line down the center and measured equal distances from each side to create the width of my board. Over at the table saw, I made the cuts and then started to lay out the design for the board. I grabbed a paint can and used it to trace a rounded end for the board and then measured for the layout of my glass holders down the center. I knew that I was going to use a 2 and 1 8 inch Forstner bit to create four holes for the glass holders, so I equally spaced them four inches apart. After making the marks, I used a punch at the center of each hole to create an indention for the Forstner bit later on. Using my jigsaw, I made the rounded cuts on the end of the board and sanded them smooth. Next, I started to lay out the handle for the end of the board. Again, I typically just start grabbing things in my shop like paint cans or beer cans to trace the rounded parts. I usually have plenty of both of those laying around the shop. For this part, I just eyeballed whatever seemed symmetrical and appealing to the eyes. The final length of the handle ended up being around 5 inches long, and the total length of the board was around 24 inches long. 
After everything was laid out, I made the cuts with my jigsaw and finished smoothing everything out with my sander. I went ahead and sanded the entire board to 180 grit and using my cordless router I used all of the edges with a small roundover bit. I installed my 2 and 1 8 inch Forstner bit into my drill press and using the indentions that I created earlier as a guide and a stop guide on the drill press, I drilled the 4 holes at a quarter inch deep. After that was finished, I sanded the entire board with a sanding sponge and did my best to sand the bottoms of each hole. This was not easy, but with a little bit of time, it worked out just fine. I cleaned off all the dust with a rag and some mineral spirits and then it was time to finish this thing up. So here's that little trick that I talked about at the beginning of the video that makes this thing a multitasker. If you use an all natural oil like you do on your cutting boards as the finish, then when you're not using this board as a kick ass bourbon flight with your buddies, you can flip it over and use it as a charcuterie board that will impress any crowd. The all natural oil allows you to display and serve fine meats and cheese directly on the board itself. Smart, huh? All right, folks, that does it for this project today. I really and truly enjoyed making this. This was a fun little project to do with just some scrap wood that would have been otherwise worthless in my shop. So I hope you enjoyed the video as well. If you did, make sure you let me know down in the comments section. Don't forget about those affiliate links down in the description section. Anytime you use those, it supports the channel, and I truly appreciate it. Went ahead and teach you up another video right there in the corner. Give that a try. I guarantee you'll like it, and we'll see you on the next one.